Hi everyone, first one for 2017, and I'm already doing that thing, I think probably most of you do it as well, where you have to pause for a moment and think about what year is it actually, and I'm going to spend the rest of this month and probably part of Feb trying to remember that it's 2017, <laughs> not 16. Regardless, much bigger things happening. Uh, this week has been uh, sort of getting back a little bit to normal after the holidays, so there's a few things I've written and a bunch of stuff I am planning for upcoming events as well. So, number one, uh, I wrote a 2016 retrospective on the 1st of Jan, of course. And I never used to do these things, these retrospectives. And I started last year because I had an epically big 2015, like massive stuff changed in my life. I changed careers, I moved into state, I started doing something very, very different uh, as a way of actually earning a living <laughs> to what I've done before. But 2016 was really big as well, and, and I guess as an overarching theme, it was sort of the first whole year where I got to, to sort of have my nice uh, independent life that I have now and, and uh, get around the place doing a bunch of things. I did many, many different things in 2016. So looking at some of my notes over here, I launched the new blog. Uh, so you may be watching this as an embedded video on that blog, which is all newly designed, all nice and lightweight and clean and... <laughs> you know, all sorts of other things that I wanted a blog to be, which blogger the old one wasn't. And of course, HTTPSing things, which apparently is very important <laughs> these days. So I did all that. I was really happy about that. Uh, another thing I was really massively happy about, which also speaks to another blog post I'll talk about a bit later on, is getting rid of the traditional ads. And what I'm really talking about here is getting rid of ad networks more than anything else. Because the ad networks are the ones that are serving up malware. Occasionally, it does happen. Uh, they have been doing things on my blog. My blog, as far as I know, didn't serve any malware. But my blog was doing stuff like you'd go there on iOS and it would redirect you to the App Store to buy Clash of Clans, which, without saying anything disparaging about Clash of Clans, is just a crap experience. <laughs> you don't want this. So they were doing that. They were doing all the usual sort of download extra crap, which you really don't want. From, uh, from anything embedded in the site. So I got rid of that. I got sponsorship. I've mentioned sponsorship multiple times on this uh, blog post or rather on this uh, weekly update simply because it has worked so well for me. I'll come back to that. So I did that. Uh, blog posts. There are a bunch of interesting things that happen with, with blog posts. And blog posts are always a little bit unpredictable in terms of what's going to resonate with people and what's not. Uh, there are posts that I put huge amounts of effort into, which get very little traction. Other ones that I put very small amounts of effort into, and they go nuts. And one of those was about Dropbox. So I wrote about the Dropbox hack. And it was just simply, the Dropbox hack is real. This was the title. And it is now the second most viewed blog post I have ever written. And I only wrote this one, when was it? Somewhere in the middle of the year, whenever Dropbox happened. So I was really happy about that. went kind of crazy. That is, uh, that is actually 13% of my page views for the entire year of 2016. So, you know, that's one of the things you just never see coming. I think I wrote about that the day it actually happened. So, you know, there we go. Uh, I was really surprised with the success of some of the other blog posts. I mean, okay, Dropbox, big news. I was very surprised with the Ubiquity post. And I know I've mentioned Ubiquity multiple times on this, uh, this video or rather this series of videos. And this is the networking gear, which now adorns my house. I've got a bunch of it over there. I've got a bunch of it in the garage, the living room, everywhere. I didn't expect that to resonate like it did. Uh, but hey, it's, it's good. A lot of people have gone out and made their lives much, much happier uh, by fixing their networks. So, you know, good news there. That's nice. What else happened? Uh, I started doing these and the podcast. You know that already because you're watching this. Have I been pwned, went through the roof in terms of size? I've chatted a lot about that, particularly things like uh, my data breaches went from 67 to 178 in total. The total amount of data went from about 256 million records to over 2 billion. So what do we call that? It's about an eightfold increase in, tra in, uh, in uh, data, which... I don't really want to sort of go out and say, well, isn't this a success because so much stuff got owned? Uh, because I don't think it's success. I don't think a good success measure of a data breach website is that more sites uh, get their asses handed to them. <laughs> that is not really what we want. Certainly not anyone ethical wants. So that happened. 
uh, verified subscribers, I tripled. Uh, I'm almost at a million verified subscribers now. I think that will probably tick over in uh, Feb into the seven figure range, which would be nice. Alexa rankings went way up. Twitter followers went way up. That tripled as well. So really, really big year for Have I Been Pwned. Have I Been Pwned traffic was crazy this year as well. The most traffic I saw in one day was about 121 million requests. 121 million requests in one day. And uh, fortunately, Cloudflare (laughs) handled a lot of that because that would have burned a very, very big hole in my pocket if I had to scale Azure to actually service that. So they went really well. Had a really big period there with Have I Been Pwned as well, where I had 12,500 people on the website at the same time after it ended up on UK TV. I spoke about that a few weeks ago. This has just been a really good fun project. You know, like all the data breach stuff and the notifications and the helping people figure out their exposure thing aside, which is all very valuable, it's just been a really interesting project for me to learn from. And I continue to learn from this, honestly, pretty much every day. There's something new I get out of it. So that's been great. Uh, As you know, I did a lot of traveling. So when I ended up doing the numbers, I spent about a third of the year traveling. Uh, So in total, what do we hit here? I think it was 119 days, which is more than what I would like. And it wasn't all hard work. I mean, I I did kind of go snowboarding for a week. (laughs) I spent some time with the family, but it was certainly 100 something days that was traveling for work, which was quite a lot. Uh, 2017, I'm I'm hesitating because I'm going to try not to do quite that much. But more than anything, I'm going to try not to do it in such a difficult way. And I wrote recently about how much effort goes into an international speaking trip. And that that trip nearly killed me. I mean, it was just insane. So I'm going away for three weeks uh, in only eight days from now, uh, which is the same duration as that other trip. Going to be a lot easier because I'm not jumping around the whole place every other day. So that'll be better. So travel-wise, that's going to be a lot of that. I went to a lot of different conferences. Uh, Probably the highlight was NDC in Oslo. I did the opening keynote there in front of thousands of people. Uh, Just amazing atmosphere, amazing conference. If you're looking to go to an event either in London, uh, let's say Northern Europe (laughs) or Australia, any time this year, get to one of the NDC events because they are honestly the the standouts. And, And I go to a lot of events, but they're the good ones. I got nine more Pluralsight courses out, and yeah, this was in part finishing the Ethical Hacking series, which was a massive uh, amount of work. I'm very glad to see that down. Also did some play-by-plays. I found myself doing a bunch of those, uh, and in fact, I'm doing two more play-by-plays in London week after next, uh, and neither of them are about security as well, which is kind of cool. So you know, they'll, uh, I'll wait and let you see what they are when they come out. But they'll be good. Lots of workshops. I'm not quite sure how many workshops I did. I think it was like 20 two-day workshops or something like that. Uh, I suspect it may even be more this year. I'm planning a really big trip uh, to Europe around about the middle of the year in June. And I'll talk more about that as I get closer to the time as well. I've got the Microsoft Regional Director role, which is now confusing people even more about me not actually working for Microsoft. So good on them, (laughs) but it is a really nice title to have. And look, I mean, other stuff, social media stuff grew, profile grew, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I alluded to um, the fact that for 2017, there's already 26 separate events uh, I've said no to. Uh, In fact, it's a lot more than that. It's 26 major conferences. And I I sort of put this in there to to give people a little bit of a sense of, of how difficult it can be to try and pick and choose what are the right things to do. Um, one of those I, I think I am now going to be able to do, I'm going to talk about uh, once they confirm, it looks like a really cool event, so I'm going to share more on that. Uh, but it, look, it is going to be a very busy year, and I've just got to be really selective about the things that I pick, because I simply can't, uh, can't be all over the world all of the time, because I kind of like where I live. You may have noticed that from some of the photos. So look, that's kind of the retrospective stuff in a nutshell. And look, I think for everyone, regardless of of what your role is and what it is you do, it's good to kind of take stock, right? And look back and go, well, how much did I actually do over the last 12 months? 
and and look, you can do this anytime. It doesn't have to be a, a New Year's thing. But we often sort of forget um, how much we've achieved and how much work has gone into into what what it is we all do. So I think that's a that's a positive thing. Whether you blog it publicly or write it down somewhere or talk to your significant other. So that was that one. Uh, something totally different. Security sense. I did my column uh, and I wrote this last night, my time. And I said there are many unknown unknowns in security. And for those of you for whom that term or that phrase may be a bit unfamiliar, uh, I'll link through to the column. There's a link there to, to Donald Rumsfeld doing a, a video snippet. Must have been, was it late 90s, early, must have been early 2000s even. Uh, anyway, he's talking about terrorism and talking about things they, things they, they know they know, things they know they don't know, things they don't know they don't know. And it's, it's kind of, there's been a lot of parodies, right, of Rumsfeld talking about this because it it is a kind of funny video. However, he does actually have a valid point in that very often there are things that have happened that we just we just don't even know that we don't know about them. You know, there are times where there are things that have happened and we know there are things we don't know, but there are other times where we don't even know that they've happened. So even explaining it is confusing. Regardless, the premise was that we have so many security incidents that we simply don't know have happened. We've got no inkling whatsoever. And I started thinking about this more after talking to a few people this week who said things along the lines of, you have got no idea just how much data is actually out there that you have never even seen, right? And this was often in the context of have I been pwned. Now, that's true. What's also true is that they have got no idea. And none of us have got any idea about how much data is out there that has already been hacked out of systems and is floating around and we're yet to see. And 2016 really started to teach us this because we saw LinkedIn, Dropbox, MySpace, Tumblr, all of these things that had happened years ago, and then the data suddenly floated up. And part of this discussion as well was that there are people out there that do know about these events. And these people have the ability to make a positive impact on those who have had their personal details exposed. And I would really like to see, I guess, a bit more responsibility, for want of a better term, on those people who know about these incidents to bring them to light. And I don't just mean give them to me. Get in touch with the company. Let them know that there's been an incident. If you see this data floating around, because it does have a really serious adverse impact on the individuals that are caught up on there very often. So a lot of unknown unknowns. Watch the video clip if you haven't seen it before. It is kind of funny. So that was those guys. Now I wrote one last night as well on my blog, different blog post, about me having finally removed all remaining remnants of any sort of ad content from TroyHunt.com. Now this was one of those blog posts that it was very quick to write. I spent less than half an hour on it, and it went unexpectedly big. So looking at my stats now, I would normally see some triple number of visitors per hour, and it would be you know three, four, five, six hundred people an hour browsed by the site organically. Uh, and that sort of went up tenfold last night. So I think it looks like we got to about four and a half thousand uh, people an hour coming by, largely to read this content, largely because it got on Hacker News again. Which, uh, which tends to be like the modern era slash dot, which is good. Now, the, the message in that blog post was that because the sponsorship model is going so well, I've now removed any sort of fallback position to ads because what I did originally is I thought, I'll do this sponsorship thing. I'm sure I'm going to have vacant slots. I'm sure that there's going to be times where there's nothing there. So I'll just sort of gracefully fall back to an ad if that's the case. And the reality of it is, is that I haven't had a single vacant sponsorship slot since I launched it. I'm booked out through to April. The sponsorship spots are paying an order of magnitude more than what the ads ever were. So I don't reckon I need ads at all. I don't reckon I need to fall back to them if a slot is unfilled. I've I've done well enough out of the sponsorship. Let's just kill the ads. Because regardless of whether I have this sort of primary position of sponsorship and then fall back to ads or not. The very premise of ever having a situation again where someone else's iframe is running in the site doing the nasty things that ads often do, I'm just not real comfortable with that. 
So all the code went. There was HTML artifacts still there. They're gone. JavaScript gone. CSS gone. The whole lot's gone. And of course, in writing this, it sort of spurned this discussion again about ads, ad blockers, and sponsorship. And this is a really divided sort of area where there are lots of people going, you know, good on you, the sponsorship thing's good, we want to support you. And in fairness, that's probably the majority of the feedback. But there are also people who just absolutely, under any circumstances, do not want to see and will consciously block anything that has even the whiff of an ad. So I don't really care if you call it a sponsorship or an ad or you call it whatever you like. But they're saying that even a line of text is not acceptable and it will be blocked. And this is just not a healthy attitude. Because we know that we need to have some sort of model whereby publishers can get some remuneration. Now, it's not that I need it for the blog. It's a nice to have. It's something that sort of encourages me to do more of what I do. It, it certainly, uh, certainly helps. And it also is very useful for doing things like giving me some good relationships with these sponsorships. And I have one-on-one -on -one relationships with every single one of them. But the attitude of this sort of scorched earth, kill all the things, every ad must die, is really unhealthy. And what I'm actually finding is that there are many people using Adblock Plus, Ublock Origin, all these sorts of things, who say, I went to your site and I was surprised that I couldn't see your sponsor message. Right? So they weren't expecting it to be blocked because the reason they're running these things is to block all the nasty stuff that ad networks do. Not to block legitimate, honest bits and pieces like a line of text from a sponsor. Now the thing to remember is that that sponsor banner was very consciously blocked by someone. So they went to my site and they went, hey, Troy's got this piece of text, let's delete it. And that's effectively what it is. So it's been uh, submitted to the likes of Easy List. The element name, I forget whether it was the element name or the CSS class that was on it, has explicitly been blacklisted and it's been consciously blocked. And that's really disappointing because I think ad blockers have got a role to play in making more responsible ads viable. And by any reasonable measure, this is a responsible ad or sponsorship, whatever you want to call it. Look, that's an argument that's not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, I said uh, recently when I wrote about how ad blockers are part of the problem that I'm not going to try and get smart and circumvent ad blockers and play this game of one-upmanship. I get paid exactly the same from sponsors whether you run an ad blocker or not. That's one of the nice things about the model. But we do have a problem and simply blocking everything is not the solution. Okay, so last couple of things. Uh, in terms of my upcoming travel, so I'm going to be in London next week, which looking at my calendar is around about the 16th. So January 16th, I'm going to be there for NDC. I've got a two-day workshop there. I've got a couple of talks. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff to do there, including recording those Pluralsight play-by-plays. So that's going to be great. I'm going to be in Belgium the next week. I'm speaking at the Zion Security Conference. I'm also doing a workshop for them. And then the week after, so now at the very end of January, I'm going to be in Copenhagen and doing another two-day workshop there. And there are still some seats available there as well. So if you're in Denmark or accessible to Denmark, uh, that could be a really good event. We're doing this one now because the one I did in October, we massively oversold. <laughs> so we've taken all of the overflow from there into this event. And I expect that we'll oversell this one as well, which would be very, very nice because I really like those guys. <laughs> the, uh, the .NET user group there in Copenhagen looked after me exceptionally well uh, in October. We had a really good event, and I'm sure this one will be good too. I mentioned before June, I'm going to be doing a really big trip in June to Europe. I'm going to bring my family and have a bit of time out as well. I'm going to have uh, quite a bit of time in mainland Europe, and then I'm going to be in Oslo around about the middle of June for the NDC Oslo event. In the Netherlands for a bit, I'll be in the UK after that, and I'm going to try and fill out some events in the UK too. Uh, so if you are in any part of Europe or between me here in Australia and Europe and you want me to come and, and do the workshop thing with your organization, uh, let me know because that's going to be a really good fun time. And last thing, because I was just talking about sponsorship, I've had Raygun on again for the third week. They have covered me uh, right over the holiday period, which is fantastic. 
I love what those guys do. I have honestly uh, used their software uh, of my own free volition <laughs> for many years now. They've done a great job. Uh, so show their thanks to them as well by giving them a click on the sponsor link on the uh, on the blog above this video or, or go to the blog if you're listening to the podcast. And uh, that is it for this week. So I'll do uh, one more from uh, from home next week before I head off overseas. And then then you'll probably see a few in, in faraway lands. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll talk to you all in a week.